Give me a minute. I, I just wanted to take uh, a little bit of time and give an update on where we think things are in Syria. Last night in last night's live, we talked about the fact that the city of Hama was where the standoff was going to take place uh, between the Syrian army and the insurgency. And there were pitched battles around Hama last night, but according to uh, all sources, Hama is now in the hands of the rebels. And the Syrian army has had to fall back to Homs. And it looks like Homs is going to be the next battleground. So they are, are pushing south. Now you can see the H. Uh, T.S. folks here um, are the smallest players in this conflict, really. All of this white, all the way down here to Damascus and even off the map here, is all controlled by the government. Then everything out in the east here is controlled by the Kurds and the Syrian Democratic Forces. They're an insurgency group that is secular, non non-religious in nature, as opposed to HTS, which is a jihadi group. Although, in fairness to HTS, they have cut ties with ISIS back in 2017, and they are they claim to be a nationalist group. So they're not interested in a global jihad. They're interested in a Syrian nation state as an Islamic state in the world. And they have committed to the protection of Christians and other religious minorities. So we saw mass uh, served on Sunday in Aleppo under the control of HTS. We heard a lot of the same things from the Taliban, about, especially about women's rights. And we've seen the Taliban roll them all back too in Afghanistan. So, HTS is not without its concerns, but anything, our interest in the Syrian conflict, sh in, in my opinion, should be the diminution of Russian power and influence in the world. If Russia loses Syria, they lose their Mediterranean naval base at Tartus, and they lose their airport at Khemeni. All of that is good for the Middle East and good for the world. It means less people dead at the hands of Russian carpet bombing attacks. And the other interest I think that we in the West should have is the Kurds. Um, the, the Kurds have, are, are the largest single minority, ethnic minority in the world without a homeland. Over 30 million Kurds live in this part of the world split between Syria, Iraq, Iran, and Turkey, principally. And they are without uh, a homeland or a nation state to call their own. And as I say, they are far more secular Muslims, more like the Turks say, uh, although Turkey is deeply opposed to them because to create a Kurdish nation state, you'd have to carve out a piece of Turkey if you wanted to get all the Kurds in there. So the Turks are not fans of the Kurds. And um, at any rate, all this green is Syrian National Army. Now, I don't know what they're doing. Why are, are there no counterattacks from the north? Um, we And we just don't know at this juncture, or I don't know anyway at this juncture. So this is certainly something to watch. Um, I was listening to an analyst this morning who said that if you had said a week ago that Hama would fall into the hands of the rebels, everybody would have laughed you out of the room. It wasn't possible. It wasn't anything anybody could even conceive of. And yet here we are. Hama is now in the hands of HTS. HTS is moving right down the coast. Now, look, if they capture homes, and Hama's a big deal. Um, because the rebels have never held it, uh, not since this war started 13 years ago. They get to homes. This is important. Um, both of these towns are important crossroads to the rest of the country, logistics, potential logistics hubs. And if they get to homes, then they cut off this area here of Syria from the main body of Syria. 
And that's where the Russian bases are. So as they push toward homes, we'll, t- we'll keep an eye on that. And we'll see how this thing continues to play out. Thanks, everybody.